Good morning, everyone. My name is Scott Morris. I am the Director of Business Development for Gaming for GTS Distribution, which, yes, I know is probably the longest title anyone has ever had in this industry. Uh, but essentially, we're here to talk about board games. And I'm really happy I'm joined by two very good friends and very good partners, Eric and Rainer, who are from Board and Dice, one of our biggest exclusive partners. Uh, Eric is in Poland right now. Uh, Rainer is in the U.S. He's the U.S. representative. And we're going to be talking about a couple of different things today. Um, as some of you may have seen, we've done a big promotion this month called Retailer Support Month. Where we're working to make sure that uh, opportunities are there for our retailers to take advantage of that are unique, that are very helpful, and are mostly helpful from a dollar perspective more than anything else. Because as Eric and I were just talking about, 2020 just seems to be the most calamity-filled year of all over the place for everybody. So... Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the new releases that are coming up. Um, there is a game called which you'll see behind me here. I'll be fast that way. Um, and we're also going to talk about Children of Wormwoods, which is Escape Tales number three. Uh, some of you may be familiar with uh, Low Memory, which was released uh, last year. And then the very first one, The Awakening, which was released about two years ago. Uh, this is a follow-up to that. Um, and then we're also going to talk about the thing you see over my other shoulder, the free games, which is literally one of the most awesome packages I have ever seen a publisher put together for retailers, um, because there is literally no cost, there is no commitment, and you're going to get free games. I don't want to steal all the thunder, so I want Rainer and Ira to be able to talk with everybody about that. So uh, just in case you are new, uh, if you want to ask any questions, by all means, feel free to do so. You can hover over your video window, and there's a little chat bubble at the bottom. I'll go ahead and monitor that, guys, as we're going through it. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but if anyone has questions, feel free to pop them in here. I'd be happy to answer any questions along the way. As I say, everything is on the table, so that's all good. Um, I just saw a note from Norman. Said, morning, Scott. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Yes, I was out last week. So appreciate the, uh, the welcome back. So those are really good things. Um, with that, though, I'm going to kick it over to you guys, and I think Rainer has a presentation that he's going to share, and we'll kind of talk through things. Um, as questions pop up, guys, I'll work them into the conversation, as always, um, but really appreciate you guys taking the time to come talk to retailers about this, and retailers, thank you for taking the time to, you know, spend with us and learn about these games, because they're really, they're some awesome things. So, um, with that, I'm going to let my face that was made for radio be quiet, and I will let you guys take over. So, Rainer, Eric, floor is all yours. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Irek, do you want to? to... Uh, please start. I will be. Yeah. I will be uh, sharing. Uh, I will be popping up uh, in your in right. your, uh, your flow. So I will be here. This naughty guy who will uh, who will uh, be doing bad things. <laughs> so um, so basically, uh, yes, we are from Board and Dice. My name is Rainer, and. Um, we want to talk to you about uh, briefly the releases of uh, this year. So basically the, the five games that you see on here, uh, some of them are already out previously. So we had the expansion for Teotihuacan Shadow of Shitle that came out in March. We had Traintopia that was our main release. And then the last three, uh, which are Tekeno Tawantinsuyu and Children of Wormwoods uh, from the Escape Tales line. The last presentation that we did um, focused more so on uh, Tekenu. Uh, so in this presentation, we want to talk about the next two titles, which are really the ones that are coming up uh, from now on for later uh, in the fall. And also um, a bit about Shadow of Shitle, because uh, we have right now a reprint coming up to the US as well, because the first release went so, so good that we have decided to also reprint uh, this expansion. And uh, <clears throat> it will be available in the same time as Tekenu in the States. Uh, so uh, correct me, Scott, if I'm wrong, it will be near the 20th of August, right? Um, yeah, correct. We're probably going to be receiving it right at the end of this month, at the end of July. So we'll be able to have that distributed to all of our different centers and available for everybody about middle of August. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Sorry, Rainer, for breaking up. No, no, you're fine. Um, and let, if you haven't uh, been part of uh, one of the previous uh, presentations, and we don't want to, to spend a lot of time um, on this, but we want to give you just a brief overview again of uh, who we are and uh, part of why we're doing this presentation, especially some of the later things that we will be talking about. Um, 
we um, we were talking just before uh, with with Scott about how this has been a year of where you have to make adjustments and plans and and so forth and uh, fortunately we have been very well set up with that part of that has been with our ongoing uh, relationship and partnership with GTS uh, and also the other partners that we have throughout the world both when it comes to manufacturing and, and uh, localization in other parts of the world. We have distributors both in North America and other parts of the world, as well as local distributors, which have allowed us to respond to the needs of the market and being able to maintain uh, our deadlines, being able to maintain uh, estimated and expected uh, manufacturing and uh, shipping times and so forth despite the fact that we uh, have been in the middle of a, a global crisis. So we've, we've been very proud of uh, our partners that have been able to, to help us at this time. Um, also um, on, on the left side of the screen, you see um, basically some of the values um, for us as, as Board and Dice. Some of the things that we, uh, how we basically conduct our, our business is based on, on certain values that we have. Uh, one of them is our loyalty towards our partners, uh, in this case specifically towards GTS and you as the retailer. Uh, that's the, the driving uh, effort and the driving value behind these presentations and also some of the things that we'll be talking about later as well. Uh, one of our goals is to help the hobby grow. Uh, this is not just about us uh, as a business to grow, but we understand that uh, we only play a small part in the, the overall business and, and helping you as a retailer to, to grow and helping the business to grow and be a positive influence in that regard. Which also brings us to leadership. We realize that as a publisher, we have a role to, to be at the forefront and try to, to innovate, work towards a positive change, but also to support uh, in all areas. And that comes again, both towards GTS as our distributor, towards you as retailers, but also towards customers, towards media partners, and everyone else that we are working with. Now, these uh, top three, that does not mean that things have to be uh, boring, but we can also participate in, in making sure that the games that we publish are exciting and that the way that we present ourselves uh, is something that is compelling for, for customers, for you, that we have fun and exciting games with, with compelling themes and exciting mechanisms. To, uh, to share. Um, let's dive a little bit more into detail for the 2020 publishing plan. Again, uh, we had Shadow of Sheetle that was uh, released uh, earlier this year and with the, the reprint of it that is coming. So that, that will be coming like we were just saying uh, towards the middle of August. Uh, we also had Traintopia, which has done really well uh, for us and it has been very well received, both when it comes to uh, customers that or and, and gamers that are playing the game and as well as uh, how it's been doing in, in sales. So we're very thankful towards uh, you guys for that because of course we recognize that you have a very big hand in making this, this game successful. Um, Tekeno, which is um, coming out uh, now, basically it's, it's currently on the boat. We are uh, expecting that to, to arrive here uh, just very shortly here and at the end of, of July uh, to also be available uh, in August. Um, and this game, um, of course, we, we, we had two years ago, we had uh, Teotihuacan, which was our big uh, release and which is also uh, still to this day, uh, one of our, our biggest sellers. Uh, when it comes to the market uh, response to Tekeno, uh, it, has, it has already before its release uh, been on the level of where Teotihuacan was around seven or eight months after its release. So this has done really well the way it's been received by, by gamers, by, by media, and by reviewers, and also, of course, uh, in pre-orders. Uh, so we're very excited for this, and we uh, are very confident that this is going to be a successful title for you as well. But uh, the rest of this presentation, we want to talk about uh, the two titles that you see at the bottom of the screen, Tawantin Suyu, which is uh, scheduled to be released in October, and also Escape Tales Children of Wormwoods, which is scheduled to be released at that same time. Um, these two titles, if we start uh, with 
Tawantinsuyu, uh, the Inca Empire. Um, this is one that again uh, falls in the the medium to heavy uh, Euro game side. And one of the reasons why we are very excited about uh, about this title is because of uh, the the designer David Turchi, who is a very well known and respected designer, and uh, he's very involved in the gaming community, and and that has helped uh, a lot to to have his involvement to to help people get excited um, about uh, about this game. Uh, the game itself. Um, and of course, Scott, you have uh, you have played this one uh, before as well. Uh, it's it's even though this is a, a Euro game, uh, which th there are a lot of Euro games that fall into this same uh, weight category and that do um, that share similar me mechanisms. For example, so this Tawantin Suyu uses a bit of worker placement. That's the one of the, the main aspects. There's uh, also a bit of area majority and, and trying to, to make sure that you manage your cards properly that you have in your hand, managing your resources, and that you're planning and strategically making choices. But despite that, it's it's a game that, that feels innovative and modern. It, it feels fresh. It feels like it is a 2020 release and not something that is just reusing uh, old mechanisms. Um, the way these mechanisms come together, um, particularly the, the combination of worker placement, the area majority and the resource management, uh, the way they combine and the choices that they invoke and the, the feelings and the strategic planning that you have to do, it feels fresh and it feels different from other games. Despite the fact that there are some very noticeable ties in this game that you will recognize uh, when you're saying, oh, well, this is something that feels familiar with comparing with other games in the line, with uh, Teotihuacan or Tekenu. This, this feels familiar, but when you're sitting down and even the presentation of the game uh, feels different and should be appealing to, to anyone who is a fan of, of heavier games. Um, and, and it's also something that um, th there's a solo mode in this, uh, which especially during these times, uh, but also it's, it's a growing uh, demand for for uh, games to, to have a solo mode um, and it's important to to note that when it comes to Tawantin Suyu it's not just uh, a matter of being able to uh, to to play and try to uh, achieve something or, or beat your own score or anything no this is a game design again both the game and the solo mode has been designed by David Turchi which means that there's a very very compelling AI that you're working towards that acts as a real uh, opponent and, and these types of uh, of solo modes as well as AIs that are designed by David Turcy have been very well received uh, when it comes to that uh, slice and share of the market. Yeah, I think as as most people who follow our our webinars know, <clears throat> this is this is my weight of game. Like like if I could be stuck on an island and have to have only a specific type of game with me, like it would be the traditional Euro, the the heavier, meatier reward you for strategy, reward you for long-term play kind of things. That's, that's just my own personal like love of, of gaming and everything. Um, and I play a lot of these. I mean, I, I play a, a pretty heavy amount of big, you know, hour and a half, two hour games that, you know, can, as you said, kind of feel repetitive at some times. Um, you play some games and you'll be like, oh yeah, that just reminds me of this. Or, oh yeah, that just reminds me of that. Um, when, when Rainer and Eirik first showed me talent into you, I, you know, first, like many of you probably struggled for the first minute or two, trying to figure out how to say it correctly. Um, but once we got that out of the way, we sat down and started playing it and it blew me away because it's not, it's really not like anything else on the market. There, there's, there are a, dozens, literally hundreds of Euro weight games but a lot of them can feel like they're overlapping their swim lanes, so to speak. And it really is unique. And it's, it's, it's a word that I, I don't want to use too much with games because that's something that a lot of people are looking for. And it's also kind of like perfection. It's very hard to find. Um, but this is a game that it, it has a lot of little mechanics that feel familiar, but how they're put together to make the big experience is completely different. 
And it was one of those things where I remember for the first, like maybe five, 10 minutes of playing, I was like, wow, I am really going to do bad at this game. Like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out, trying to put all the strategies together. And then probably by around, I think maybe turn three, it, everything clicked. And I was like, oh, okay, this is how everything works. And it was, it was an amazing experience. We, we spent, I think if I remember right, um, we spent a total of maybe an hour and a half to two hours playing the game, but then we spent another like two to two and a half hours just talking about the game afterwards, which was pretty amazing and pretty cool. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. The fun yeah. fact with this game is also that uh, I am playing this game a lot, showing this to, to uh, my distribution or localization partners. And each play um, lasts around two and a half hours because of the game plus all the uh, discussions afterwards. And I really need to admit that uh, I'm, never, uh, I'm never bored. I never, ha I never have enough of this game. This game gives you such a different opportunities and every game is literally completely different uh, because of the number of strategies you can, you can build up and the, the things you can focus on during the play. I would easily put this game uh, next to Teotihuacan and Tekken on the shelf because it's really from this kind of ways perspective here. Yeah, and, and it's, this is a game that uh, over the past two months or so, uh, I probably, I probably demoed it, uh, of course, for, to various um, people, both, both directly to, to gamers and to media and reviewers to uh, retailers, to distributors, and, and so forth. I probably demoed this about 40 times now in the last two months. And, and every time this is, this is a game that has been uh, very well received. Um, and, and, and it's interesting because normally when, when we do demos, and especially with um, a lot of the people that, that I tend to interact with, usually it's a matter of us having to uh, to fight for for the time and the attention of them because they are trying to look at as many games as possible. They have to to review um, hundreds of the thousands of games the games that are on the market, and and despite the fact that we are fighting against a stream of of other of other games, this is is one that they are they have been so willing to to take the time. They've been excited. They they want to do full games of it because they don't want to just dip their toes in it, they want to, to be immersed in it. And, and, and that has been a very uh, unique experience of, of um, having, having that, um, that attention uh, to, the, to the game. So, so again, this is, this is one that we are very, uh, very excited about and very, very much looking forward to, to being able to, to provide uh, later this year. Uh, again, as a reminder, the retail price uh, for this one is $60. Um, and the, the scheduled release date for it is uh, October 22nd, which coincides with uh, the first days of, of Spiel, even though that's not uh, happening this year, but there will still be online uh, conventions around, around that time. Yeah, one thing um, I want to add is that this is also a really, really good game to have on display in your store. Um, mm -hmm. I know a lot of retailers don't, you know, have the time or, or even have the foot traffic right now with everything go going on in terms of being able to do demos in the store and, and have people sit down. And I know a lot of times, you know, when a game can be like a, a 90 minute or 120 minute game that it may not be the most optimal one to do as a demo. But this is a extremely colorful game when it's placed out on the board. Um, one, of the, the, one of the most interesting things to me about the game is that it's a worker placement game where you really don't have workers. You have to get the workers from kind of a, a, an open pool to then use in the certain areas. And each of the workers has a different ability. So you may place a red worker that does X and then Rainer may place a, a yellow worker that does Y. And that's a really, really unique kind of feature to it. But because of the way the board is set up, and you have this kind of top down view and then you have all these different colored meeples in all these different areas. It is a very, what I call kind of like that, that walk by tactile experience. So if I were to see this game placed out, whether it was people playing it or whether it was just in a display case or on a display table, 
it's something I immediately want to go to and pick up and touch and try to figure out like what's going on here, right? Like what, why are there, you know, six different colored meeples all over the board when this is a two to four player game? Like what's, what's going on with all this, right? Um, so it's definitely, it's very, very cool. So if it's something that you would want to have in your store as a, you know, display copy or a demo copy or anything like that, just let your sales rep know and we'll be happy to help you guys out with that. The board and dice is part of our, uh, our program for the demos. So it's really, really good thing to, to have in the store. And nowadays with the advent of COVID, especially in the US and the challenges that retailers have to, you know, get foot traffic. Sometimes just having a game on display in a, in a front window in a case is, is just enough to get the attention and attraction from people, so. Yep. And, and we do have also, let me go to, to the next slide. There, there are links uh, to where you can get access to the media kit that has, uh, of course it shows uh, different images where you can see the board set up, for example, uh, so that you can use that. Of course, you can use that also as an inspiration for for a store display or or for anything. Uh, the rule book is is available. Uh, there are also a couple of different uh, videos. Uh, for example, uh, Man vs. Meeple did uh, videos for both Takeno and Tawantin Suyu. In fact, they they developed a new uh, format for their review specifically. Uh, for in order to to be able to show off Tekeno properly, and they they carry that format over into Tawantin Suyu as well. Uh, two very good uh, videos if you if you want to uh, to get a better idea of fr from someone else's perspective, right? We we can certainly talk about uh, these games, and we'd be happy to do so. But it's also good to see someone else's opinion who who is clearly unbiased in in this, and um, someone who who they they have no uh, no no stake in in the success of the game and and to see how excited they are to share their experiences and uh, especially when when they have played this because they played this uh, with us both at uh, both online on Tabletopia but we've also sent them uh, an early copy so that they'd be able to to play with that in person and being uh, being able to. Uh, to get a, a good feel for what's what's the actual game like, and and they're they're also in the in those uh, the video, uh, there are plenty of of different uh, shots of of the game board and components and and everything. And like Scott said, this is a game that will definitely draw the attention when it's being laid out uh, on the table, um, and and even even just in in photos and so forth. Being able to it, it's something that draws people in. They're looking at it at it and, and they're wondering wait what's what's going on here what you're telling me this is this is a worker placement but there are there are five colors of workers and there are over 80 different spots and and people are intrigued to find out what's what's going on um, and how do you know which worker is yours right <laughs> <laughs> this and, is and also this one is thing the that first is, thing which might, with, with uh, clicks in your head where are your workers right now <laughs> yep and, and it's also interesting in, in that most worker placement games, you have you have several phases where, okay, you're placing workers and then the workers will be cleared off at some point. You know, here in this game, once you place the worker, it is on that spot permanently blocking that spot for the rest of the game. Um, and so, so there are very compelling decisions that you can, you can, uh, you can make, but, but definitely the, the video by Man vs. Meeple, and there was also a Tabletopia playthrough with Meeple University that I participated in, uh, where where we were using the Tabletopia platform to to play this. So um, those are, are good for you to get more of a gameplay uh, feel for if you, if you want to to dive into more. Okay, what does this game look like on the table? What does it feel like to to actually uh, play it? And of course, feel free to contact us. There's uh, Erex uh, email address in there, or you can contact your sales rep with any uh, questions that you might have, or you need any additional data, we're, we're more than happy and ready to, to provide any of that to you. We want this to be uh, easy uh, for you as well to, to be able to, to have what you need. Uh, we realize that your experience and, and how you uh, sell to your customers, you are the expert there. So if there's anything that you need in order to, to better sell to your customers, uh, please let us know. We're always happy to to provide anything in that regard. 
And Rainer, I'll make sure um, if you guys can email me a copy of the presentation, I'll make sure that the presentation and the link to get it out to all the retailers that have attended and I'll make sure to include them in the webinar description when we post yep. it on YouTube Definitely. Well. Yep. Awesome, thank you. And <clears throat> I would like to underline the, the last sentence here on this slide because uh, it's uh, quite important uh, because of what is uh, happening uh, with the orders right now on, uh, for the game. Um, I need to tell you guys that, for example, um, we are no longer getting any um, pre-orders from the distribution in Europe because uh, already our partners booked the whole print, uh, which is coming to, the, to Europe right now. And um, what I can assure you is that all the copies which will be pre-ordered by you guys through GTS uh, they will be de delivered. So we can guarantee uh, that all the pre-order copies will be delivered to you uh, before the stream date. All right. Uh, now let's go over and talk to uh, talk about uh, the next uh, title here, which is Escape Tales Children of Wormwood. Um, and, and just as a very quick overview, so this is the third game in the Escape Tales series. We previously had Escape Tales The Awakening and Escape Tales Low Memory. Um, and, and, and all of them, they, uh, they are, they are a, a good way of describing them is that they are very much a next step from the, the more traditional one hour escape room style games. Uh, these ones delve into uh, a deeper and immersive story. Um, and, and all three of them, even though they feature similar mechanisms, uh, so, so people will, will recognize if they played one of the titles, uh, you, can, you can definitely dive directly into this one and you will know, okay, how does this game play? What do I expect? Um, but then there are also new things that, which I'm, I'll talk about on the, on the next slide, uh, that are different in this one. So even though they are part of the same series in a recognizable format, uh, this is definitely something that still provides a very new, and, th and they're very different. Um, they, they, the, the theme as well as how they play, the feelings that they invoke, and the emotions that, that are involved are very different in each of the titles. Um, it, when it comes to Children of Wormwoods, uh, the story itself, so again, this is a story-driven escape uh, room game. Uh, there are over 60 endings in the game. So depending on the choices that you make, uh, which, which sometimes you'll have to, to make very impactful decisions, knowing that when you're making this decision, this will permanently alter the game in some way. This will affect the outcome of the game. Uh, you have control over the, the story. You will be pre presented with uh, choices that will uh, really tug at your emotions. You feel uh, encouraged to, to either enforce or evaluate the moral compass that you have in, in the game. Um, and and it's, it's set in a um, story-driven and adventure-style game, similar to what you would find in more um, games that are based on, on, on role-playing games, right? Where you have uh, character progression, you have choices that you're making that will alter the, the stats for your character, things that will alter the, uh, just the experience that you will have. Uh, now, when it comes to to the actual uh, gameplay and stuff, every choice that you're making from, from the very beginning of, okay, how are you approaching the different, the different puzzles to solve in order to, to continue on to the next location? How are you processing the hidden information that is in the game? Because in addition to outright story uh, elements, there are also pieces of information that might be hidden a little bit where you have to to maybe make certain assumptions or, or guess, well, is this part of, of the, the information that I see, was that important? Is, is this a, a clue that I need to pay attention to? And if so, will you let that guide you in, in the, the path that you take and say, okay, I want to investigate this aspect further. Uh, everything that you do in the game will impact the story of it, it will impact the, the character, and it will also alter the final outcome of the of the game so that's how you get to those 60 plus endings is based on the decisions that you have made as a player so there are there are so many options in the game where you can take different paths 
uh, even though in the end you, you're coming arriving to the same general conclusion of the game, uh, figuring out what's what's going on in the game, how is this story impacting me, how is it Im impacting other characters in the story that you encounter, and which path do you play, what role do you play uh, in that. Um, this is uh, again a, an October release, so October 22nd uh, is the, the scheduled uh, release date for that with a retail price of $35. And again, there is a media kit available for this, as well as um, a rule book. And there will be things coming out for, for both uh, Tawant and Suyu and for uh, Children of Wormwoods. It will be content from, from our media partners and so forth uh, in order to, to help um, drive the attention to the, to the game. Um, th there's a very likely chance that during, uh, during Gen Con, uh, just awaiting uh, information uh, and confirmation of that, that the tutorial uh, chapter of uh, Children of Wormwoods will be played live. Um, so, so we were very excited if, if that um, will come to, to fruition. Nice. There's been if a I can, if I can, can came through. Yeah, go ahead, Art. Uh, if I can mention something, uh, I uh, need to admit that um, Children of Wormwood uh, is the biggest game in the series right now. So. Uh, we have decided to um, check three different approaches uh, in Escape Terry series. In The Awakening, we have focused uh, on smaller story, but, um, but with um, um, more complicated riddles. In, um, uh, in Low Memory, there is more story, but less complicated riddles. And in the third part, so Children of Wormwood, has a combination of the complicity um, of um, uh, of the riddles. Uh, so we have we have um, also some math riddles, some uh, graphic riddles, uh, but the story inside is huge there. So uh, look at the endings. We have sixty plus endings in the app right now. What more? The exploration mode is also bigger than in uh, the games from the series because you can easily go through the whole map, check all areas in the presented world. Uh, and uh, what more we have, uh, we have added to the app the ability to mix um, the, uh, the items you are finding during the game. So you can check maybe if something matches to each other and you are uh, able to craft a different item or uh, maybe to crush an item and get some clue from it. And this can, um, this can provide you a completely different ending as well. Also, the exploration on the map can provide you some different, some different important things that can happen in the game, which uh, you cannot meet if you won't explore. So, so the game I would, I would compare it to uh, some kind of old school uh, point and click game in a, in a of course, uh, in a very good way. Uh, but uh, I really need to admit that it's, it's huge. It um, takes uh, I, a, a lot of time. It gives you a lot of pleasure of thinking of where to go, not only solving the riddles, but giving you a chance to uh, meet the world uh, to get some kind of na narration from the elements you can you can find during the play. So uh, I think if someone likes adventures mixed with uh, a proper amount of searching for clues, this can be a, a very good pick here. Um, so there's been a couple of questions that have come through and I just wanted to pull them up here real quick. Um, uh, Eric, it looks like you replied to them, but you only replied to all the panelists, not the panelists and attendees. So I'm not sure if everyone oh, saw. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, <laughs> so okay. maybe, I, yeah, sorry, I misclicked something, sorry. No worries, no worries. Um, so uh, Julio had a question around language dependency for the game. Um, and I know there's obviously the app, like you had mentioned, you know, the, the online database that you're, you're working with inside the game as well. Um, so uh, if, if we are like talking... If we are talking about these uh, two games, so Tawantins to you is uh, it's not so language dependent. It has some elements, uh, but still we are focused here more on the iconography. 
Uh, but if we are speaking about SKTS Children of Wormwood, oh, it is heavily language dependent because the story here, the app, all the elements also related to the text, um, uh, a storybook in the in the game, they are um, heavily language dependent. And yeah, it's uh, it's even not the easiest English here. So um, we are working, this is why we are working here on several different partners to uh, provide the localization for Germany, Spanish uh, language, Portuguese. So yeah, um, this game, if, if someone does not uh, know, or, or if someone knows English only on the basic level, uh, playing the game uh, and having fun from the immersive side of the game can be problematic. So yeah, it's, it's heavily language dependent. If we speak about children of Wormwood, if we speak about Tawantins to you, the level of uh, language dependent items you can compare easily to uh, TOT Wacom. Yeah. yeah and, and in fact, everything in, in Tawantins to you is the, the gameplay itself. Uh, there's no text on any cards, there's no text on any, any tiles or, or abilities. The, the rule book is, is obviously. Um, in, in English and then also the uh, the player aid there's a, a full page uh, player aid that covers all the actions and, and everything in the game um, but aside from that when you're actually playing the game there's there's no text on on anything there so but but Julio just sent a comment that he meant uh, escape tales so, yeah. so and, and in, yeah. in, in escape tales and this is true for all of them in general so the the game itself comes with a obviously there's a rule book that explains how to play what different cards mean what certain tokens are uh certain key elements or certain iconography in the game but then when you're actually playing the game uh to take children of wormwoods for example there are three uh different chapters to the story uh, and each chapter uh, has its own book um, and there are as uh, so so when you when you're playing and and you are you're looking at you might be looking at a, a card uh, that depicts a room for example and, and you're looking at this room and you're trying to find uh, clues to to something uh, I don't want to, to, to spoil necessarily um, the, the the story or the elements in there but there, but there might be clues that you're looking for how to get out of the room or to discover uh, what's really going on with some aspect of the story. The, the cards themselves uh, do not have a lot of text on them. Some of, the, some of the items that you find or some of the instructions that you may receive on a card might have instructions on it. But then every time that you look something up, you say, okay, I want to look, uh, look at this part of the room. There's a, there's a grid basically that you're using. Uh, so you can say, okay, well, A1 corresponds to paragraph 136. Now you're going to the storybook and you're reading a story portion that uh, that tells you. Uh, it, so, so it's an, a narrative uh, aspect to the game where, okay, now you're reading what's happening. You will either receive uh, some information or you you will will be an explanation of okay, what are you seeing in this in this particular space of the of the grid. Then, as you are uh, solving the puzzles and riddles. <laughs> Uh, any clues, that, sometimes the, the, the clues that you receive, they may be text-based. Sometimes they are... And also some answers. Or... And also some um, uh, answers. I guess there yeah, are... And, and I was going to... Yeah. yeah. Because the, 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 the clues that you need to solve, the, not every puzzle, so some of the puzzles are, are just... Uh, and that's why th these are a good, uh, good game to play with, with a group of people, right? Even though you can play it uh, as a solo game, but some people are, are have an easier time with math-based puzzles. Some have a more uh, have an easier time with with spatial uh, puzzles, and others have an easier time with text-based riddles and and so forth. So so the game features all of these things on the puzzles, but then once you have you have provided the solution, now there's then in the app there's a a, a again a narrative that tells you. What's the outcome of this? Either directly through a paragraph uh, in the app or something that tells, hey, this was the solution. But then it directs you to another paragraph in the storybook. So, so you're constantly using 
uh, it's a little bit um, of a choose your own adventure uh, game, right? In that you you are reading a, a paragraph of text, you're finding out information, then you're deciding where to to go next. And this is true for for all of the the games in the Escape Tale series, is, is that they have they have this aspect in common, where also the the puzzles, the story, and the images in the game on on different cards form a, a whole. So they, they come together to, to basically, the puzzles are, are thematic based on what's, what's going on in the story. The story provides the narrative and the, the explanation. And then you have the images that, the, that you, can, you can look at to, to explore directly and say, okay, well, this seems interesting. Is that, is that, a, a, that item, is that one important? Should we go over there? And, and, and especially even though this, and, and this is um, probably the last bullet point on, on this slide, even though there's no, there's no time limit when you're solving the puzzles, as in the, the, the game itself, you can take your time, whatever you feel comfortable with. There are some people that play through it very quickly because they, they feel that, okay, this is, uh, this is I, I, just, I just want to, to try to solve it, and, and that's where they get their enjoyment. And then you have people that will play this and they want to explore, they want to see everything, they want to look at the world around them and they want to, to go and see, okay, well, what about this part over here? Have we covered everything? Have, do I have all the information? Have I seen everything that the game uh, has to offer? Um, so so that there's, no, there's no time limit when you're actually playing the game, which is why on the side of the box, it says 450 plus minutes, uh, which basically, this is why we're saying also that this is a next step to your traditional escape room games, where if, if people have had uh, the experience with, with uh, the, the 45 to an hour minute games, they provide puzzles, and they provide a, a briefer um, story, uh, whereas the Escape Tale series, this is something that you can delve deep into. You can either play it over a couple uh, of evenings, or you can make an, a whole evening uh, out of it dive into it like a good book or like a, a good movie or maybe even a, a, um, a trilogy of, of, of movies that take you through different parts of the story uh, that, that let you be part of the narrative, that let you make the choices that affect, in this case, the main character of the game. Uh, you will see things through, through his eyes and you can even, in the app, there are ways where you can, you can say, well, I found this item what does Gilbert, who is the name of the, the character, what does he think about this item? You can look up that item in the app and say, okay, does he think anything special about this? Does that give you a special clue? Uh, you can, you can, can try to combine uh, items and, and it lets you really be part of that story where, where you, uh, you, you are in control over the outcome, not just based on, on what you find interesting in the game, but the, the choices that you make will, be, in a very real way, completely affect the outcome and drive the story in a direction that you have now, you have now taken the story to that point. Now, that may not, um, that also, speaking of, of some of the previous titles in this game, Tell Series, that final outcome may not have been what you were aiming for. But the choices that you made, you made to that point, which means that, are they replayable? In, in a sense, they are, right? You could, you could play them and make different choices in the game. You can play and, and try to, to, to change the, the, the choices that you made, take a different path, maybe explore a few areas that you did not explore before. Now, that's not going to give you a completely new experience each time, but it would allow you to, to explore different endings, different aspects to the game that maybe you did not uh, see previously. Now, where, where this game changes from the previous ones in the Escape Tale series is that there are, there are new ways to explore the locations. Um, there are, the, not only are there location cards in the game like previously, but there's also a, a more open world that you can explore things in, and more things that happen within those uh, locations than previously. The character that you are... Uh, you're, you're following the story of, of Gilbert and you, there's a brief introduction to, to him and, and that sets the tone for how do you interpret who he is in this world? Uh, 
how do you interpret this information? What's what's important to him? And but then you guide the character from that point, uh, based on on what you think. Okay, well he must care a lot about this aspect, or he he probably does not he does not want to be bothered with, with this other aspect. You will drive that character, and you will alter his his stats within the game. Uh, it's set in a dark fantasy setting uh, that we that is also new to to the series so each one has has had a very different uh theme it's it's non-linear even though the story itself progresses from a start to a finish through the series of, of three chapters how you get there is very much up to you you can take very different paths that sometimes uh intertwine in the game but but it's not a you're not forced to approach the story in in a, a in a in a linear uh, fashion, and then uh, like Eric was talking about earlier, there are new types of cards, items that you can get both as equipment or as you can use within the game. Some items that you find early that oh, I wonder if this will be useful later, and and maybe it will, maybe it won't. But it's it, it puts you in the decision of a, an adventurer who who goes out and 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 tries to understand the world around him and tries to, to make choices of, okay, well, is this a place where, should I go over here? Should I use this item? Should I um, care about helping this person? What do I want to do? And then that affects the overall uh, outcome of the game. Um, this, so also, this also, this also- Comments? Huh? I'm sorry, go ahead, Ari. Mm -hmm. uh, this also increased the replayability. So this is the answer for yes. one of the comments here. Um, basically, we do not destroy any elements um, in any Escape Tales um, uh, part. So, uh, in The Awakening, Low Memory, or, or Children of Wormwood, we are not destroying anything. What more, in Children of Wormwood, the uh, replayability value is pretty high because there is a ton of elements you can miss during the game. You can not, you can. Uh, just skip, not explore those elements, even not to meet them in the game. So after the first play, I think up to three, four plays can be can be very unique. Um, in my opinion, two plays of the Awakening as well. Uh, low memory is the uh, it's is a little bit different because the story there is pretty uh, fluent but combined uh, from these three chapters and. In my opinion, one uh, play will give you uh, the best view on what is happening. Of course, you can check different endings because every uh, our part has a different endings, and you need to take slightly different decisions to reach there. Uh, so um, even after uh, some time, if you have the game on the shelf, you can come back to the game and have a ton of fun. And, and in fact, there's a there's a part in the in the game early on. So this is not uh, spoiling any of the of the story or or aspects to it. Um, there's a part early in the game where you are you're in this village that you're exploring, and and I remember in in early uh, playtests and, and development when I went through this, I went through the the village in or town in, in a very um, I, I, I don't want to call it efficient, but it was it was quick because I found something that I thought was really really valuable information, and then I just went with it and I left I left the the town probably sixty percent unexplored because I found a piece of information that I felt okay well this is it this is completely this is the this is the path and then I just went with it knowing that I left parts of the story behind but I was I was so eager to to continue on, on from that point. Now I know uh, after after subsequent plays that my the decisions that I made from that point would have been different had I explored a different area. I would have run into to other characters. I would have run into uh, been able to to get clues that later in the game, even though I ran into to information, they were not important to me, and I never investigated them because. I did not have this initial clue or, or so forth. So it's, it definitely has, uh, it, it, even though the whole story itself has the same general, it has the same start, of course, but it has the same general ending. Um, this is definitely the one that has the most to explore over multiple plays compared to, to the previous. 
Now, Scott, you there was something that you were going to say um, earlier as well. Yeah, no, um, you guys addressed almost everything there with the, the comments that had come in from the chat. Um, Derek asked about if there was a Dropbox available, um, and I think we, we did post it in chat, but just to make sure everyone knows, there there is a lot of information that Board & Dice makes available. You know, Rainer talked earlier about wanting to support the retailers and making sure that you guys look like the experts that you are to, to the consumers that you work with. They do provide a lot of information, both uh, from information standpoint, but also from a graphical standpoint, so you'll be able to use those pictures and stuff. So we'll definitely make sure to, to get that out to everybody. Um, I was going to also say, um, you know, Julio had made a comment about, you know, do you destroy the game or how much replayability is there with the game? Um, I, f I was first introduced to Escape Tales in the summer of 2018, uh, right before the release of The Awakening. Um, I still haven't been able to get to all the endings. <laughs> and, and I'm a completionist at heart. And it's one of the things that I find really unique about this kind of series of games is that there are a lot of options for escape tale games or just escape room games that are one and done type games um, because you destroy them or because you you just you finish them once and then you got to the end and that's it and with this one it's it's much more of that hybrid of it is an escape room experience but it is really a narrative driven escape room experience and you can change that narrative with the most simplest of things. I, I remember the first room we were in, in The Awakening, and my boss and I were sitting there walking through it and we're like, okay, well, we, we can take this now and we can go this direction, or do we stay here and do we actually you know, go through and, and, and get more information from the room we're in? And I remember Philip, a gentleman at Board and Dice, he looked at me and he said, you better make the right decision because it's going to lead you down one pathway and you don't know where you're going to go. <laughs> yep. and it was just, it was such a cool feeling to know that, okay, we can make this decision now. We can go down this road and go this direction, but later we can come back and we can play it again and we can make another decision and completely, you know, go down a totally different narrative, which has made it really, really cool. So yeah, this, this and, is a very exciting series. And, and, and a good way to, to look at it is this is like a, a good good book or, or good movie, right? It's, you're, you're going to, you're obviously, after the first playthrough, you will know the overall plot of the game. Um, you will have seen the, the where, where the, the, the story ended, right? But but that does not mean like even even take uh, take the awakening for example that game I have played I I, I don't know how many I, I I played it multiple times with multiple groups of people and sometimes we have we've made the same decisions that I have made on my own playthroughs right so I've I played the game without discovering anything new and it was still a new and immersive experience for me and and the reason why is because I played it with new people. I allowed them to, to I, I was so excited to just be part of their experience and seeing their reactions because it brought back memories of when I played that, even though I made the exact same decisions, there were those moments where, oh wow, this, this, was, this is really cool, this is exciting, or uh, you, something happens that, that, that fundamentally uh, touches you and 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 then, so 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 even though there, there there's not infinite replayability for for me uh, individually, but by playing it with other people, that just because of the story, and again, like sharing a good movie or a good book with someone, you can you can still play it, you can experience it, you can be part of those those highs and and have knowing okay, I know what's coming up they have no idea and being able to actually focus on because the first time that i played it and got to that point myself i was so distracted by okay i'm trying to i'm trying to process this information i'm trying to to process the clues that i have okay where where do i go next but then on a on a replay of it especially when other people are making those decisions i can sit back and, and just enjoy the story and and, and even to to this day there are things that I pick up on. I'm like, why did I not, why did I not see this before? Why did I not pick up on that clue? I, that would have made a, a big uh, difference in how I would have approached uh, the rest of the of the game. 
I think the comparison with uh, the movie is the best here, Rainer, because I have exactly the same experience. I have played the game fully twice, uh, but um, during the conventions when I am demoing it, uh, I love to see how other people play it. And yeah. I love to hear which choices they made and how the story changes, evolves. So yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, comparison to a movie, uh, especially this one you like and you watch several times, even though you know how, how it will end, right? Yep. You still watch it because you like it. And the story here, the story provided here in uh, all three Escape Tales games, I think it, it gives you such a, such a possibility and such a feeling uh, in the end. So, yeah, I truly re recommend it. I am a huge fan of this series, but yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> and, and especially, like, when it comes to these ones, it, it, it might be worth mentioning that I actually work on, uh, on, on the editing of the text. So often I will see, edit, proofread, and work on the text of it before I have a chance to to explore explore it in game. So often I have I have seen I have seen everything in in writing that the game has to offer, but it's still a, an experience when I'm playing it. So you, even though I've I've had everything spoiled to me during the the development process, this is still a game that I wanted to play because the story and how it plays out in in the narrative of it. It's not just about dry information that you're receiving but it is, is about also uh the the story and how that is presented um in the game um let's uh talk here um again uh, unless there were any other uh questions uh, but we can get to those uh after after this slide um you are good this is uh this is something i think a lot of people have been waiting for so this will be yep. a really good discussion and this this comes back to what we were talking about early on. One of the values for us is that we we very much focus on on showing our loyalty uh, towards those we work with. And in this case, we want to talk about our loyalty towards you as the retailer and how we can show that. Uh, this was announced during uh, a previous uh, presentation that we did. Uh, but if you have not heard about it, or if you need a refresher, or you haven't taken advantage of this. Uh, we have uh, prepared uh, special game bundles uh, to, in order to, to show our support for you, uh, especially in light of the very challenging months that we have already behind us, but also the things that we are in the middle of. This is, uh, the coronavirus situation is not about to, to go away anytime soon. And we, we realize that this has presented uh, unique challenges for each of you, that this has affected you differently and and we uh, were talking about okay how can we show our support for you and how can we help you and your business uh, and we decided that we wanted to do this by by giving you game bundles uh, where basically uh, here is a collection of both approachable family weight and light strategy games that you can get for free there is there are no strings attached to this there's no minimum order quantity there is no uh, requirement as far as how you use this. Do you want to use these as demo copies in your store? If so, great. Do you want to use these as incentives to for your customers? Or do you simply want to take these games and being able to use them in, in a way to, to help sell games and drive uh, customers into your store? Whatever you want to do with these titles and with, with the game, that's up to you. We, we want to, to give this to you. It is, it is free. It is our gift from us to you. And, and a, only a very small way for us to, to be able to show support towards you. We realize that we do not understand all of the challenges or unique things that uh, are affecting you at this time. Uh, and, and, but we wanted to, to show a support from our end and, and saying here is something that uh, if it can benefit you, please take advantage of it. Please take advantage of, of being able to, to get this, uh, this game bundle. And as you'll notice, um, these are a, a, a collection of, uh, including uh, a game that we talked about previously, right? A, a brand new release, Traintopia, that has done really well for us, uh, including the, the retailer exclusive promo, which uh, GTS also has. 
uh, as well as three uh, previous titles. And so, so this is a, a collection of, again, more family weight than light strategy games uh, that we are very hopeful that you will take advantage of and, and being able to use them however you, you see fit. Yeah, this is this is very unique, right? We, we've worked with a couple of partners that have been willing to offer some games during this time and kind of you know challenging times, is the easiest way I guess to say it. Um, but they really they very rarely focus on new stuff. They're generally focused on much older stuff, and all of these have come out in the last year. Um, Trinkopia is recently in March. Um, Trinkopia is getting a lot of good press. There's been a lot of reviews that have been put out about it recently great tile lane if you have people who are into like that carcassonne type feeling i've had some people tell me it's carcassonne with trains but it's, it's a lot different than just carcassonne with trains it's, it's a very unique experience on its own. um this is just a great opportunity especially the fact that there's no no minimum orders like you don't have to buy x number of games to get this you can literally either go online today to gsdistribution.com enter in the item code it's end rsp so retailer support package um you'll find it there and you can order it directly online or if you're on the phone or you email or your super you can just then put it on the and you're good to go there's no minimum order quantities there's no you know restrictions or anything like that um the only real caveat to the whole thing is that the uh promo for train topia the promo tile is while supplies last um, so if we run out of that, we may end up not being able to get that out to you. But um, being able to get this many games, I mean, Traintopia, Decimal Wings, anyway, $3 games, World Shapers, $25 games. That's a lot of SRP value for free with no ask from the publisher of you, the retailer. I mean, they're basically saying, we appreciate you, we want to support you, and we're giving you this as a gift, which is really, really cool. We know that the time is hard right now, and uh, this is also uh, this also reflects our value. We want our values to not only be a phrase on the wall. We want our values to show our engagement to the industry and uh, to our partners. And this is why we want to do that. And this is why we we won't stop um, to do such a such a thing for you guys. So I hope the game will do pretty well for you that you will have a lot of fun with them and just just play and enjoy. <laughs> Sean, Sean Wainwright just said, Rainer, your gift to us is your lockdown beard. Honestly, <laughs> though, thank you for always supporting <laughs> the local game store. You guys are amazing. <laughs> yes, Rainer's beard has become uh, quite epic as we talked about earlier. <laughs> this is a fun fact because we talked about it before the webinar starts. So. <laughs> That's very That's true. Funny. That's very true. Um, that's awesome. So, uh, guys, we're we're a few minutes over the the allotted time for everything, and I don't want to keep anybody too long. Um, I, I will just let everybody know um, it's very easy to reach out and get a hold of Board and Dice directly, as it is to get a hold of me. Um, I'll make sure when uh, we have the video recording of this set up that we can send it out to everybody so that you have both the information from the presentation, but you also have the links that we talked about for the Dropbox and the media and things like that. Um, but definitely hope everyone has found a lot of value in this. There's um, the retailer support package is available the entire month. So you're able to order that all the way through the end of this month. Um, there's been a couple of people that have made some comments in webinar chat that they've already ordered it this month and they've gotten it, which is great, which is awesome. So thank you. And I'm glad that it's working out for you guys. Um, but with that, I think it's probably a good point to wrap up here and any additional kind of follow-up questions we can check up via email and, and communicate that way for everything. So uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Um, you know, it's obviously, it's always good to talk to you guys about the awesome games that you guys make and all the new things that are coming out, but it's even more awesome when you're actually taking time and effort to get back to the retailers in a way that helps support them. Because at the end of the day, the friendly local game store is the backbone for us as a distributor. So making sure that's that true. So very important. Exactly. Thing. Exactly. Thank awesome. you very much for your time, guys, and for your effort uh, to build this uh, this, uh, this community and this, this industry. So thank you very much and have a great day. Awesome. And retailers, thank you. thank you. We hope you have a great week in your stores and we'll see you next week.